Hi, this is Peter Schulz, developer of WordPress plugin WP Data Access. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can add a database table to your website. To do this, um, I presume you have the plugin installed, and in the plugin menu, you'll see a menu item Data Publisher. So click on the Data Publisher. This is the first step. Now we're going to make a new publication, so click on Add New. You can give the publication a name. I'm, in my case, I will call this Customer because I'm going to show a table, the table Customers on the website. Um, select the type of output you will like. I will show that um, next. On the, on the website. But first, we'll do just a flat table and select all the columns. So save your changes and you can now test your publication by clicking on the test button, the test publication button. And this is how the table might look like on your website. Uh, the publication might look different because of your style settings. Um, this publication uh, supports uh, sorting and searching and pagination um, and this should be available as well on your website so let's add this publication to the website um, to do this uh, you can click on the show shortcode to see the shortcode and then copy it but you can also just click on copy shortcode and now it's in your clipboard um, I'm going to add this shortcode uh, to the sample page of my uh, installation my WordPress installation it's not a real website it's just uh, a website I use for development you click on the edit button and the shortcode now is in the clipboard, is on the clipboard, so I can just add it here. Um, but you have to be careful with, uh, because you will need to have the, uh, no, you will need to have the code editor visible, otherwise it will be added as text. And I can now put it just somewhere in my text. Update. And I can now view the page. And as you see, I have my table on the website now. And it, it supports uh, searching, it supports uh, sorting, and it supports pagination. Okay, that, that's um, the most simplest form to add a table to your website. Um, let's make it a little bit... Uh, more complex, well, enhance it a little bit. Um, sometimes you might have a table with a large number of columns and then you want to make a selection of some columns. So you can do that in this way. Uh, you can add and uh, delete columns. Uh, click on OK and you can see right here the columns that will be displayed in your form. I'll leave it to flat. Uh, so the output type is flat, save the changes, and again you can then uh, uh, test the publication. The publication still has the same ID of course, so I can just switch to the page and then reload the page. And as you can see the ID column is now gone. Now let's check out another uh, type of um, publication, uh, but for that I will make a new publication. Uh, let's call it, uh, let me see, let's take the, the student table, students, and now I'm going to create a responsive uh, publication, so save it. If you test the publication now, um, you get something like this, which is a... Uh, just a one column table you can click on it and then see all the details but that's probably not what you want this is not very useful um, so what you can do here is you can change the number of columns displayed let's say i set it to three 
save it and then test it again then you can see oh, then you can see that there are now three columns um, so these are the first three columns that you have selected I've selected all the columns um, so I don't have a, a lot of influence on this part so let's really select some columns um, I want to see for example the last name uh, I want to see the email address and the phone number um, save it test the publication again and then I get something like this um, now as you can see the plus icon is gone so I, we see the three columns but previously we had a plus sign here plus icon as well so we could click on that icon uh, to see the rest of the details now it's important to know that when you select exactly three columns like I did here and the, you define the number of columns to be responsive as three as well then you will not have that sign so let's do this again and then check the, the last name the uh, email address and the phone number and then add some additional uh, information like uh, the, this information then OK click save you always have to save again and if you then test the publication you will see this icon and if you click on it you can see the columns that you have selected in that order now let's go to the sample page um, and edit the sample page and I just have to change the ID here and then update it and as you can see we now have a responsive table and you can do the same searching you can do uh, pagination and sorting okay um, I think these are the most important parts there's some things like uh, you can dis disable the icon so if you test the publication without the icon you can still see the details but there's no icon so you have to know that you can click on it and you can not click on these columns you can only click on this column on the first column um, so personally I like it with uh, with an icon um, you can show the details collapsed or um, expanded so expanded and collapse is, is in fact the, the start mode so in both cases you can see uh, all the the details uh, and click and you can click on it um, but if you select expanded uh, they're initially expanded if you click collapse they're initially collapsed and the difference is that um, you will not have a modal window uh, that pops up but you you get it in line so it's a matter of what you like uh, on the sample page this mic might look uh, quite different as you can see uh, so it's a matter of choice so you just check it out yourself and find your way in it so there's one final thing uh, that's important um, right now I've, I've selected uh, some students uh, in fact I selected some courses um, as you can see here there are three uh, tables in fact these two are our views uh, the courses and status are views but you can use tables as well as views um, but every table any table that you you would like to add to a publication or use in a publication um, you have to expand explicitly grant access to and you can do that in the manage plugin front-end settings as you can see here are the tables that I've already added um, let's say I want to add a, a table with teacher information now I go back to oh, sorry uh, 
this one, publication. Now, if I uh, try to add a new one, and you can see that there is a teacher table available now as well. So make sure that you have granted access to the table or view that you want to add to your website. Um, and finally, uh, some other thing which is very important as well. Um, you need to check the data publisher settings. So um, jQuery data tables and jQuery data tables responsive must be loaded. It is loaded by default. Um, so the, the plugin loads it by default. Um, if you want to test it in the dashboard, you have to load it in the back end as well. If you just want to show it uh, on your web page, you can just uh, load it in the front end. If you are already loading these uh, because of other plugins or any other reason, then you do not need to load them. So I hope this is um, enough information that helps you uh, to add database tables to your plugin, uh, to your website, sorry. Um, if you have any questions, please use the forum. Uh, if you have any uh, feature requests, use the forum as well.